In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to begin the thumb. Now, I've already done a couple of things before I started the video, and that is to take the, the stitches that were on waist yarn and put them back onto the needles. And if you want to see how to do that step, look at the pinky video that I've posted for this pattern. I've also prepared the yarn ball by getting the yarn to the point where I'm about to begin the orange. So I had a bunch of brown still left from making this last finger. I cut that off and I'll set it aside um, because down here you see how the brown pretty much finished. You know, I, was, I actually have one little stitch of orange here. It was just about to begin the orange when I stopped working on the thumb and the orange actually begins over here on the hand. So in order to make the thumb sort of match the rest of the hand, I need to start knitting with orange now. So I've got the, the yarn ready to go to do that. The next step that I need to do is to go ahead and pick up four stitches in what in the pattern is called the inside corner of the thumb gusset. And what I mean by that is it's this little section right here. When you look at the thumb, you can see that there's this area right here where if you didn't pick up some stitches, there would be a large gap there. And also this is a way, adding some stitches here is a way of creating some more space for your thumb since it's a larger finger than your other fingers usually. So we're just going to pick up four stitches along here. And I'll show you how to do that if you're not familiar with picking up stitches. But just be aware that as I'm doing this, you don't need to copy exactly where I'm putting my needle. Picking up stitches is not an exact science. Really the one thing that you want to make sure to do, really, really two things, are to space your stitches relatively evenly across this space. You don't need to be too specific about that though. And also to make sure to ins when you're picking up your stitches to insert your needle into more than just one thread. So when you pick up stitches, you always go into the fabric and you wanna make sure to not do this. Don't just go in one thread in to the fabric because that's going to make a join that's a little too uh, fragile. So I'll pick up my first stitch say here. So that you, there you can see I've got a lot more fabric that I'm working into here. And I'll take my working yarn, put a loop on the needle and just pull a loop of that through. That's picking up a stitch. So then I'll just go along a little further and maybe pick up a stitch right here. And I want to make sure, by the way, to go into places that are really stable. This just looks a little too loose to me and that's going to leave a gap. So I like to go into places that are nice and tightly knit. And that will mean you have less sewing up to do later, less gaps to fill in. There's two stitches picked up. And I'll come over here and maybe pick up a third stitch there. And as you can see, I'm not doing any counting or any precise measuring or anything. I'm just kind of evenly spacing them and looking for nice stable spots. And the last place I'll pick is, you know, someplace that's kind of close to this next stitch. I'll go right here. Try not to split any stitches while I'm at it. Okay, so there's our four stitches picked up. Now, the next step, you can redistribute these stitches now. Um, you may have, if you're using double points, you may have picked up these four stitches onto one needle. You can just leave them on there for now. Um, don't worry about redistributing them, at least for the purposes of this, I'm not going to worry about it, because I mainly want to show you what happens next. And that is that you need to work one row of knits right up to the last three stitches. So I'll just go ahead and knit all of the thumb stitches up until the last three stitches. Okay. And there are the four stitches I picked up. I'll just work the first one normally. And now, let me get this tail out of the way. Now I'm at the last three stitches. 
And what you want to do with these is you want to slip the first one, purl-wise, in other words, slip it without twisting it. Knit the next two together, and then slip, or take that stitch that you slipped and pass it over. So that's the slip one, knit two together, pass slip stitched over that I just showed you. And that takes you down to 20 stitches for the thumb. And it's these 20 stitches, or well, it depends on which size you're making, but in my case, it's 20 stitches. And then it's those stitches that you work in knit two, purl two rib to finish up the thumb.